This video demonstrates how easy it is to create and modify dashboards in the TrueSight Operations Management Console. After logging into the console, if you cannot see the dashboards page, use the navigation pane on the left to locate it. To create a dashboard, you can either click the Add Dashboard button or select that option from the dashboard's action menu. I'll use the action menu. The dashboard editor opens with two rows of dashlet placeholders. The first row contains four columns and the second row one, but your final dashboard can have as few or as many rows as necessary for your purposes. Each row has an action menu with options that enable you to add, delete, and edit row properties. You can also use direction arrows to relocate the row. I'll start by naming the dashboard. Because you can share dashboards with other users, try to provide a name that conveys the purpose of the dashboard. This simple dashboard will be used for training, so I'll name it IT Operations Training. I'd like the dashboard to show a couple of system messages, a web page, and a training video, and I'd like everything in one row. I'll edit the first row so that it has only two columns. As you can see, I have an option for sizing the column or cell widths. Even though I'm placing four items in this dashboard, I'll select two columns of equal size. So now I'm ready to start adding dashlets to my first row. I'll start by adding my system message, which will alert users of an upcoming maintenance window. After choosing my dashlet type, I need to configure my dashlet. To do that, I'll click the gear icon. In addition to the message, I can also provide a title for this dashlet, and I can also specify the relative height of the cell. Messages are pretty small, so I'll select one and save the configuration. Notice that after I add my dashlet, I still have the option to add another one. To illustrate how this works, I'll add my second message as a new dashlet, but in the same cell. I'll use the same height setting as before and add a title and message. As you can see, the simple message dashlet is pretty easy to configure, but the process of selecting and configuring dashlets is the same regardless of the dashlet. So in the same column, I'll add a training video that I posted to YouTube. When I select the YouTube video dashlet, a default video is inserted as a placeholder. Notice that you specify only the video ID and not the entire URL for the video. I'd like the video to appear a bit larger in the dashboard, so I'll select 5 as the relative size. I can also specify an aspect ratio. For this video, I'll select 16 by 9. I'll finish the first row by adding a web page to my second column. For the web page, I'll select a slightly smaller relative size. And if you don't know the parameters for any of the dashlets in your dashboard as you're adding them, you can save the dashboard and finalize the dashlet parameters at a later time. So now my first row is finished. As you recall, I didn't want a second row, so I'll delete it from my dashboard now. Had I wanted to add more rows, I could simply click this icon below the last row and it would add a row to the bottom of the dashboard. So I'm pretty happy with this layout, so I'll click Save and save the dashboard. Now that I've saved this dashboard, if necessary, I can edit it by selecting Edit Dashboard from the Action menu. When I no longer want this dashboard, I can also delete it from here as well. 
I'm not happy with the arrangement of the dashboards, so I'll modify the dashboard and relocate the dashlets. As you might recall, I added three dashlets in a single column. I think that it would look better if I had one message in each column. So I'll drag the dashlet from one column to the next, relocate the other dashlet, and save the dashboard again. Oh, this looks better. When I want to create another dashboard, I can simply return to the Dashboards page and select Add Dashboard from the Dashboards action menu or click the Add Dashboards button. Thanks for watching.